Good evening, everybody. My name is Vasini Chandra Sekran, and I am here to represent my team, Living Biology. Uh, this project has been undertaken under the guidance of Professor D.B. Fatak, and uh, we would like to thank our mentors, without whom this project would not have been completed. Uh, Mr. Avinash Avante and Mrs. Meena Mishra uh, for their guidance and help throughout the project. Let me introduce you to our team members, Gaurav, Namita, Nivedita, Shivram and Mamsi. Uh, about our project, we had three major objectives. The first one was to convert the NCERT biology lessons into interactive HTML pages. The second one was to develop uh, from the content of the NCRT book, we had to develop interactive activities uh, using the PI framework. And the third ma major objective was to develop a question bank through which whatever content had been converted into activities, uh, they had to be tested. The knowledge of the student had to be tested with the help of quizzes, which was done through the question bank developed by us. <coughs> More on the first objective, it was uh, living biology, I am proud to say, has been taken up for the first time this year in the summer internship program and we have converted around 18 chapters of the book into interactive HTML pages with JavaScript. Let me show you a demo of the uh, page that was done, one of the pages. So as you can see, the whole uh, uh, chapter has been converted into a HTML page and the exercise part has been made interactive by allowing the student to enter answers even in the fill in the blanks. If the answer is right, it shows the correct, uh, I mean it shows it's right, if the answer is wrong, it shows the correct answer and says uh, his answer was wrong. There are uh, the match the following has also been made interactive. Um, choose the correct answer has been implemented with radio buttons. As you can see, wrong answer, try again. Yes. Now, the second objective. It was to develop by activities using the NCRT content. Why did we have to do that? Because even though there are teachers who teach well, uh, the student's capability differs from person to person. So he may not be able to understand what was actually said to him. Uh, this activity allows him to uh, visualize the concept and learn it thoroughly, uh, not just from the text from the book, but by visualizing it. So. Uh, we developed uh, PI uh, activities using the flash develop and nearly 120 activities have been made by our team members. Next. Let me show you some demos of our activities that we have made. Uh, the first one is uh, flow of water in plants through xylem. This activity mainly shows how uh, water is absorbed by the plant and how it moves to various parts of the plant. Can I have the demo? Yes. As you can see, the uh, brown part below is the root, root tip from which water is absorbed and it moves through the cylindrical thing that is the xylem. Uh, it passes water through various parts of the uh, plant and hover overing uh, every, every part shows what the part is. Also there is a detailed view of what happens. The water particle enters through the the water particle enters through the uh, root tip and moves to the xylem. The second uh, one is the one that we do every day, we all breathe. So how uh, respiration occurs in our body. The respiratory model is actually an experimental setup. Can I have the demo? As you can see, this is the experimental setup of our uh, respiratory system. Uh, the uh, parts are labeled, the yellow balloons are, uh, oh, sorry, the red balloons are the lungs and the whole jar is the uh, lung cavity. Now you can see how we breathe by clicking on that. So when we inhale, the lungs expand and the air flows in and when we exhale, the lung contracts again and the air flows out. So this can be seen interactively through uh, this activity. The next one is a very nice one, I like it. Uh, it, uh, it, it teaches the student how to, uh, you know, uh, take food properly, uh, what makes him, uh, what is junk food, what is healthy food and what is good for him. So the student can be able to choose his own diet and see what will be the consequences of him taking that particular diet. So there is a thin person and if he eats a lot of junky food, he would become fat. So uh, implicating that we have made an activity which shows the, he can choose his own diet, whatever he wants to eat. 
if he chose uh, if he chooses the healthy one it says uh, not correct so uh, all the junk ones are chosen and uh, the tin boy keeps eating all that and he becomes fat <laughs> uh, there is also the other version of this uh, where the fat boy eats all the good stuff and becomes thin he can't take lollipops because it's junk so yeah so this is a good way of teaching the student how to take proper diet <coughs> the next one shows the type of pollination there are many kinds of pollination uh, done by various agents this one shows bees doing cross pollination and self pollination the student can select whether he wants to see cross pollination or self pollination and a view what happens <coughs> when the bees sit on the flower they uh, the pollen on the flower stick to its legs and it keeps hovering over the same flower so self pollination occurs that way and cross pollination is between uh, different flowers the same way you can see the bees moving around between different flowers so the next one. this one is for phototropism in plants when the plant is in a very uh, small stage it needs to grow towards the sun so that it can make food uh, so this activity shows how the plant stem moves towards the sun in order to make food so the plant grows during the day towards the sun and it is done because of a, a hormone called auxin which is present in the plant the next one is uh, asexual reproduction in binary uh, binary fission in amoeba this shows how the uh, amoeba undergoes fission so the <coughs> the nucleus of the amoeba starts expanding and then uh, the parent cell splits into two daughter cells further fission can also undergo from the daughter cells to produce even uh, further uh, children so that is shown in this activity uh I would like to thank my mentors and Professor D. B. Fatak to uh, to have given us this opportunity to work on these kind of activities, which change every student's lives uh, across India. So uh, it was a very uh, interesting module to work on. And now, moving on to the third objective, uh, Namita will be here to talk about it. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Namita Prawal from NIT Jaipur, and I'll continue with the third module of our project, that is the Ekshiksha Question Bank. till now you must have seen that what are the tens are doing our tens are trying to make the education system interactive so we have made the chapters interactive we have explained the activities interactively so what is left the thing which is left is assessment like how the children will assess themselves and their progress so for that we have the ek shiksha question bank what this question bank basically does is it allows the students to select a topic select the number of questions and select the difficulty level that is easy medium tough and then it displays a set of relevant questions the students can answer them and then just test themselves and view the answers so it is basically a practice question set not a test kind of thing this is a quick overview of the question bank we have two interfaces one for the teachers and one for the students the teachers will first retrieve the topic tree from the ek shiksha question bank select the particular topic and then submit their questions into the question bank so in this way what we do is we are expanding our database to a wider range because teachers from all over the world can submit their questions okay second interface is for the students the students can submit the choice of questions the choice of questions means the number of questions and the type of question that is easy medium tough and then in return they'll get the set of relevant questions the question bank submit the questions in the question database and retrieve the set of questions from the question database so what are the features first we created the database for the question bank second is the topic tree display including the insert and update functions third is the insertion of questions into the database by the teachers all over the world and the fourth one is question presentation and evaluation which is undertaken by the students so before moving ahead i'll I, i would like to tell you that what we were supposed to develop is just the rapid class that is the back end 
the front end which we developed is just a demonstration of the functions which we created. So this is the database schema which we created. It has got five tables. One that is the first one is the main table. This one is used to establish the topic tree hierarchy. That is parent child, parent ID and child ID. The parent ID is for the parent topic and the child ID is for the subtopic. Second is the topics table with child ID as the primary key and the topic name and the description. Similarly, we have the questions table containing the corresponding questions of the topic and with question ID as the primary key. It has got question type which is which specifies whether it is easy, medium or hard. Basically, it is a float value. We haven't kept it as a string value, it is a float value and we have kept it as a float value so that it can be used by the adaptive testing module. Then next is the difficulty level and the statement and then the question format. The question format specifies whether it, the question is in the image format or the text format. Next is the options table. Options table is also similarly similar to the questions table with question ID as a primary key and the answers table also with question ID as the primary key. This is similar like this is just a pictorial representation of what I just said of all the tables and stuff. So I can skip it. So moving to the first module that is a topic tree display with the insert and update function. In this teachers all over the world can pick up a particular topic from the list of all the topics displayed and can perform the required operation that is insert or update. So this is basically what we do. First is the submit topic that is the community. Uh, by community we mean the teachers, they can submit the questions. But it won't be directly included in the database. First, the topic experts or the subject experts have to uh, approve it. And here the subject, by subject experts I mean the admins of the Ek Shiksha portal with which this database is going to be implemented or included. So after they approve the topic, it is going to be inserted in the topic tree or the database. So let's move to the demo. So we click on insert a new topic. This is just a demonstration of the functionalities. It is not the actual website which is going to be uploaded. So we select the parent topic. It gives a list of all the topics there. Select any topic. The topic name, the new topic name which you want, which the teacher wants to insert. Suppose in physics we insert motion. And then any topic description describing what we are about to insert. And in submitting. We can see that the topic is there in the insert topic. It is inserted. Like we have motion at the end. So moving to the next module. That is the topic update. In topic update is similar to topic insert. In this the community will be given the set, uh, list of all the topics. And, the sub, and then they will suggest the updates. Which will be approved by the subject experts. And then will be edited or inserted in the database. Let's have a demo. Update a topic. We select the topic from the drop down. Whichever you want to update, we can update the name as well as the description. For example, now we want to replace motion with kinematics. So we replace it with kinematics and we can edit the description as well and submit. So the topic is updated. We can see that uh, well, this is uh, motion is replaced by kinematics. Moving to the next module. The third module is the question insert module. In this, the teachers can insert the questions in the corresponding topic. So this question insert module allows the teacher to specify the type of the question, whether it is MCQ, true, false, etc. What is the difficulty level of the question and what is the type, like what is the question format, like image, text, etc. So these features we have provided in our database. So let's have a demo of this. That before that, we'll see that in this case, the community first accesses the database for the topic tree, selects a particular topic, and then submits a question in the database. This is a temporary storage of the question in the database. Then the topic experts, that is the admin of the portal, they will approve the question and will permanently insert it in the database which can be used further. Now moving to the demo, insert a question. So first we select a topic from the drop down, any topic we can select and then question type that is multiple. We have included only MCQs and true false, we can include any any number of types like MCQ with multiple answers, fill in the blanks, etc. So this is the question form. We need to enter a question. Enter any value. Then all the options, there are like these four options because it's MCQ with four options. 
and then the answer and the answer explanation. We have added the answer explanation feature so that I told you that it is just a practice test that the students are going to give. So once the answer is wrong, they need to know why is it wrong. So for that purpose, we have provided this answer explanation field and then after specifying the difficulty level, we can submit. So the question is inserted in the database. So now we have another type, question type. We can, I'll just show you the form, won't go into the detail. Select any question type. True and false. If it is true and false, the form will be like this. So similarly, we can implement other forms for other types of questions. So moving to the next module. So next is the final module, that is the student interface part, that is a question presentation and evaluation. In this, the student is supposed to enter the number of questions he wants and the difficulty level and the topic with which he wants to test himself. So in this, let's straight away move to the demo. There's a question. Wait, wait, wait. The question database, so like the software, this is the pink one is our software. The software first accesses the question bank on the basis of two parameters, the topic and the difficulty level. And on the basis of these two parameters, it gives us a set of questions. Next. Then from these set of questions, the software again, like it, it uh, calls a function and it presents the questions to the students. The students then submit the answers. The answers are again matched with the answers in the database and then the result is shown to the student. So let's have a demonstration of the final quiz. Like we need to select a topic. Now this is a dynamic tree, like whenever we select science, only the subtopics of science will come down in the next drop down. Like whenever we select chemistry, there's no topic till now in a database. So we select biology, there are three subtopics. Then biochemistry, either we can submit it directly biochemistry if the student wants a broader topic, or we can further narrow it to a subtopic of biochemistry. So submitting it, biochemistry is a topic, then he has to enter the number of questions, the difficulty level, as I told you, easy, medium, tough, and then take quiz. So this is the final quiz. Uh, we can answer any, answer anything. Then click on submit. Submit, submit. So this is the final score. It also displays the score and then the thing whether it is wrong and the correct answers are there in green and the result is there in red, whether wrong or correct or unanswered. So this is the final module. Let's move back to the presentation. So these are the challenges which we face in the development of a project. First is that developing activities in an interactive manner in a completely new Pi framework. When we started developing the activities in Pi framework, many of the modules of Pi framework were not yet developed like the drag and drop module, etc. So we had to implement it in our own ways. That was kind of a challenge for us. Then secondly, we used hand-drawn images and then used frames, sequential frames to create an animation effect. Then we maintain a dynamic hierarchy in the top tree using that PID, CID concept, that is parent ID, child ID concept. Then last one is the quiz question randomization. So the quiz which we take, it always produces random questions from the database. So we had to implement the random function as well. So what did we learn through this project? Actually, we learned a lot of things apart from this also. So first moving to this, working on a new platform. As I told you, we worked on the Pi framework, which is completely new to us. Moreover, two of us are from electronics background, so they had to go through or learn all the languages, Java, JSP, JavaScript, ActionScript, etc. Then secondly, adapting to a professional work environment. We went, we attended the meetings, all the Tuesday, Friday meetings by Vinashtra. Then we had to complete the deadlines. We had to start from the scratch once our activity was disregarded. So it's uh, like we learned a lot how to work in a professional environment. Then working as a unit, despite of lingual barriers. One thing I would like to point is all six of us are from different states. So we had that barrier, but still we worked as a unit. And then we learned teamwork and, te and time management. Now future enhancements which we can do to a project, firstly that till now we have included only two types of questions, the MCQs and the true and false, but we can also include further types like I told you fill in the blanks, match the following, etc. Secondly, images can be used, till now we have not included it in the database as in questions, but the database which we created supports this facility of images. What we can do is in the 
attribute of question format we just need to change the value from 1 to 2 and that in the and then in the question statement we need to give the address of the image so the software will identify from the attribute of format 2 that uh, the value 2 that this is an image address and will fetch the image from the database the third one is time constraint can be added to convert it from a practice exercise to a proper quiz and also this database which we created is going to be used by the adaptive testing software. So now I would like uh, sir to have a demo of all our flash activities on the cache tablet and checking that it works on the cache tablet as well apart from the desktop. So now this marks the end of our presentation. For that I would like to thank all our mentors and first of all unfortunately we could not present in front of Fatek sir but I would like to thank him for giving us this opportunity to present ourselves and to study and for having us a wonderful span of two months in this college, in this prestigious college and I would also like to thank our mentors Avinash Avati sir and Meena ma'am without their support and guidance this project could not have been completed. And I would also like to thank to uh, thank Rajni Khan sir and Mayang sir for always being there with us whenever we needed them. So, thanks from all our team, all our team members. <laughs>